Did you know that goop stands for Gwyneth U. Paltrow? We're going to talk about goop. This has been something that uh, has been on the radar for quite a long time. The biggest thing about goop that I think a lot of people, if you've never heard of this company, this candle smells like my vagina. Nice. I think it's a gimmick. It's $75. It's stupid. If you buy it, shame on you. But I think goop goes a lot deeper, a lot goopier than that. And I think the biggest thing for me personally is that they support and platform other grifters, including, guess who? The medical medium. This isn't one of those scams or farces. This is that <laughs> powerful. Anthony William, who is a, to me, a complete scam artist who claims to hear voices of spirit in his ear that tell him how to fix cars and tells people to drink celery juice to cure all their illnesses, whatever. So Gwyneth Paltrow, the actress, you've seen her in many, many things, including for one second in uh, the gold member, Austin Powers. That's probably her least well-known role. I am Dixie, Dixie Normus. She's in a bunch of stuff. She's very famous and she's a Nepo baby. You know what a Nepo baby is? A Nepo baby means that your parents are most likely in the entertainment industry and that's how you got your in. How, how, how did you make it in Hollywood? Oh, my parents are literally Steven Spielberg and Charlize Theron. <laughs> and I love acting, it's my passion. That's her mom, Blythe Danner, who you may know from Meet the Fockers. And then her dad, Roos Palcho, he's passed away, and he was a, a director. We're gonna talk about specifically one podcast I have not listened to. I have seen clips. We're gonna show the highlights because that's what's gone viral as of late. But it talks about Gwyneth Paltrow's wellness routine. A lot of people are outraged by it because she's not eating very much and she's shoving stuff up her <laughs> in the name of wellness. So people are like, you know, upset. I tend to think whatever she wants to do with her life, like who cares? Goop seems to be a type of place where you go to if you have dispensable income to blow. Now they're gonna make outrageous claims. They're gonna say, oh, this helps you to do this and your wellness and your health and da 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 da. Here it is. It's a, you know, health and wellness website, health, wellness and lifestyle website. I always confuse people. Someone's like, I'm a lifestyle influencer. Like what? What does that mean? You live your life? <laughs> People who are just living and they're like, this is a career. Just for example, this top, you know, it's a one of a kind top. You cannot get this at Target or Walmart. It's $420, blaze up. <laughs> they don't have larges because they don't believe in that. <laughs> just kidding, they're out. Okay, so this is a type of dumbass three you will find on this website. Now, if you want to if you want to spend $420 on their shirt, go for it. You know, if you got the money, go for it. There's not a shirt, there's not like a label on here that says like this is going to cure your diseases. So, I'm all for it. You know, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's stupid. I think fashion <laughs> at large is dumb. So, I'm not the person to ask like do you think this is worth it? Because I, my answer is always going to be no, it's not. But these pajamas Maybe, no, I'm just kidding, $209. And you can you can uh, pay it in installments in case you really wanna pretend that you're not making a financial mistake here. But we really wanna look at the wellness stuff. That's the stuff where we're like, mm, these are where the claims are, but I'm not sure are accurate. Okay, you can get a vibrator for $98. You can get a Gtox seven day reset kit. Okay, here's where I start to go. Eh, no thanks. All of this is probably garbage. So it's $195 for seven days. It says removing potential dietary triggers and processed foods from your diet can be a lot of work. The Gtox seven day reset kit gives you the tools to do a week long elimination program with ease. So you get a brush. She's very into Ayurveda. Ooh, there's a cereal. Ooh, that looks delicious. Look at that cereal. <laughs> Here's something for almost $600, $599. This is an infrared PEMF go mat. Okay, that definitely looks like it's worth $500. And I do like warmth, but for 500 bucks, I can just microwave a towel. Oh, here's something good. This is what I want. Knock me out. Just knock me out. Just hire, this is a, a service where someone comes and punches you in the face for $30. Uh, sleep support soft shoes. It's only $30. That's amazing. Dollar a day keeps the 
sleep paralysis monster away. She said that she always wants the brand to be aspirational. So she has no interest to mass market products. The comparison they make in the article is like to Martha Stewart. Well, Martha Stewart is an aspirational brand. However, you can buy a Martha Stewart pot or a flower vase at Walmart. You're able to be a part of her brand. The point of Goop is so that people who are rich can access it. And if you're not, then it'll feel like, oh, it's out of reach. It's just right there. I wanna save up money to buy my sleep, punch me in the face powder. But I think the, the most important thing is that we uh, listen to the, the newest and latest news. And here's a little preview. The guy that she talked to allegedly is her doctor and he's a functional medicine doctor, which is a little bit different than a traditional doctor. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs. I would like to learn more about that, the difference, because holistic doctor, chiropractor, MD, there's there's all these different labels. They all are allowed to use doctor, but they all mean very different things. And I wish I knew a little bit more about the logistics of what school are you going to, to be a functional doctor? Anyway, so here's the preview. Uh, again, this is from Dear Media Studio, and it's from the Dr. Will, Cole. let's go to his thing real quick quick before we even start this. Dr. Will Cole. So he's top 50 in functional medicine and he's also got a Zoolander stare in his profile photo. Which is so on brand for both of us. <laughs> we pod and IV at the same time. Good I'm really embarrassing myself right here. <laughs> People want to ask about IVs. I love an IV. I'm an early IV adopter. Glutathione, I, I love to have in an IV. Kind of a random, more fringy one. Phosphatidylcholine, that's my favorite IV when I can find them. They're quite hard to find. Yeah. And those make me feel so good. But this today, just because I was flying, I have just a bag of good old fashioned vitamins. <laughs> As we're recording this right now, you have a little IV, so which is so on. So she's currently hooked up to an IV during this interview. So she can't take a day off. She her her veins must be pumping at all times with wellness products. And one of the comments says, "As a doctor, I really don't understand why you have given this a platform. It's very damaging and very unhealthy. This, the woman is clearly unwell. Please stop giving people like this a platform." Wildly irresponsible to promote this. Uh, the section of on her wellness routine is disturbing. That's not wellness. That's a socially acceptable disordered eating. I can't believe that her routine is being shared as wellness. No one seems happy. <laughs> Usually the top comments are like happy ones. Everyone seems on board that this is bizarre. There's speculation that this was a distraction. Her coming out and kind of giving this wacky routine that she's gonna talk about on this podcast to get her name in the headlines in sort of a kooky way and a you know not so harmful way but I think it kind of backfired but right now um, she's going through a trial very bizarre trial about a ski accident or a ski infraction that happened she says that you know someone plowed into her but the guy who she claims plowed into her claims she plowed into him and just took off and he had like brain damage essentially from the interaction. So it happened in 2016. It's been live streaming on YouTube today. I didn't. I watched a couple minutes of it and she's actually in court talking about it and she's going to most likely take the stand in her defense. Now it's not criminal. It's just, uh, it's like similar to Brittany Dawn where it's just for money. And he's suing for $300,000. The guy tried to sue for more, but then the judge said no the cap is 300,000 and Gwen Gwyneth I guess can I call her Gwen is that a shorthand I don't know I think so right uh GP she is countersuing for one dollar and for lawyer fees because she says no that's not what happened so there she is she looks like Jeffrey Dahmer's sister or something with those glasses no offense anytime someone's in a courtroom with those glasses I'm like Jeffrey, <laughs> is that you? So in 2019, the celebrity wellness influencer star and Shakespeare in Love star, there you go, was sued by Terry Sanderson, who claimed she seriously injured him during a crash on the beginner slopes at Deer Valley Resort in Park City on February 26, 2016. Both sides presented their clients as conservative skiers who were stunned when a skier above them crashed into them. <laughs> this is such a rich person lawsuit, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. 
Owens cautioned jurors not to let sympathy for Sanderson's medical ailments, a brain injury, four broken ribs. Oh, wow. He said that the Utah man had confirmed he was fine after the crash. Owens also said that Sanderson posted a very happy, smiling picture of himself online riding a toboggan post-crash. Yeah, that's going to be a problem probably <laughs> for the jury. I don't know. Sounds a little... Maybe I'm on her side a little bit here. Not on her side, but I mean, he said, she said... You know, he waits a long time. I'm not super convinced on either side. So maybe her doing this, you know, podcast, people were saying was because she wanted to get in the good graces, get in like, I'm just a silly, quirky wellness guru, boss babe. Uh, I like to do IVs and put stuff up my rear end for my wellness. Why not? <laughs> That's what you should talk about. Don't talk about this skiing thing in court. Forget that. Okay, back to the podcast. Now we're all caught up. Gut Feelings, my book, it's under Goop Press. Goop is not just a amazing lifestyle brand. They also are in the literary space. They're putting out cutting edge conversations in book form to really elevate the literary space. Yeah, this is very similar to Hay House. Louise Hay, we've discussed her on the show before on this channel. She's the one who's like the, the mother of a lot of these people who came up with the concept, I guess, of dis- ease, D-I-S dash ease, where everything that happens to you physically is because of an emotional trauma or some sort of hatred you have of yourself. She wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Life. She's dead and gone now, um, but she started a publishing house that is the publishing house of Medical Medium, Dr. Joe Dispenza. They have a radio program. They do a lot of publishing still to this day that in my opinion is problematic. This is interesting though, I didn't know that. So to celebrate the release of Gut Feelings, here's my special conversation with my friend. This is Gwyneth Paltrow's Art of Being Well. Gwyneth freaking Paltrow. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. You're on the pod, thanks for coming on. Gwyneth freaking Paltrow, welcome. Starstruck to be on the pod. I listen Shut to up. it every week. I am. I love this pod. Oh, thank you. This, this is pod. an amazing podcast. I have to say, it no, makes not. my week whenever you text me and say, hey, when you said this on the podcast and it's some detailed granular thing that I said in passing, I know you're listening. Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> it's like the only podcast. Well, that's not true. There's an, one another podcast called The All In Podcast, and these are the only two podcasts I listen to. Who's a dream guest that you haven't had on the show? Who would I love to have right now? I mean, I, there are a lot of CEOs that I don't know that I would love to talk to. I'm very kind of ensconced in the world of business and trying to grow goop. And there's so much I don't know. And there's so many people who've done, done it so brilliantly. I think my, the person that inspires me most right now as a CEO for a whole number of reasons is Brian Chesky from Airbnb. Mm. He's, so in integrity and he's really trying to, he's coming from such a good place of like trying to bring people together in the world and oh, shut up. the way he's grown his business and you know, how he he's trying to make money like everyone else in this world, Gwyneth, come on, get a grip. And then in my twenties, I was, I really kind of, in the first half of my twenties, I, I didn't think about it a lot until my father was diagnosed with cancer and that really changed things for me. And I started reeling, you know, I started realizing that there had to be a connection between what we were eating and what we were exposed to and how that was being expressed through disease. And that's when I started researching whatever I could. This is pre-internet, but, you know, talking to people, trying to, you know, buy books on nutrition, understand the links between environmental toxins, cancer, HPVs, you know, all that kind of like mm -hmm. understanding what... I do really think that's interesting how celebrities um, or wellness, not even celebrities, wellness people will talk endlessly about chemicals, chemtrails, heavy metals, I don't know, environmental toxins, bad quality, everything, right? And do absolutely nothing about it other than sell you a supplement that is non-FDA approved and you just got to take their word for it that it's a better product, <laughs> Other than that, they are not advocating. They are not like fighting. They're not holding up signs like she's, you know, claiming to have done whatever. I roll my eyes. I don't really necessarily believe her, but 
we'll take her word for it. Um, but yeah, they don't do anything on a larger scale. You think that you would care about like the water that you so claim is needs to be alkaline. Like, why don't you lobby the government? Like you have the power and money to actually possibly start some change if you truly believed in it. But instead, they all just push their own product. So to me, again, I feel like you're full of shit and you're just playing it up to people who, I don't know, just want to buy into that for some reason. But like to me, if you really cared, you would be in D.C. like, we need alkaline water. We need, you know, congas in every home. Like they're not doing that. They're just like, oh, if you can afford $10,000 and you should save yourself. It's like, that sounds like a horrible way to think about the world. What led to the creation of disease in our culture and then mm-hmm. why, and then past my father, like, why is this so pervasive and why do we have so much, you know, obesity, depression, diabetes, type two diabetes, you know, and all the things I was observing and just wondering what could be done about it. Mm-hmm. And what were the modalities out there? And also just the idea that we all have so much agency. We don't realize the agency that we have mm-hmm. and that we have autonomy over our bodies, what we put into our bodies, the thoughts that we form, the words that we speak. Depends on what state you're in these days, <laughs> ladies. Uh, yeah, when you're rich, there needs to be an asterisk. When you're rich, when you are not rich, no, that does not apply at all. <laughs> like, tell me how many thoughts I'm allowed to have when I'm, you know, standing at a, a assembly line putting together, you know, I don't know, your products. Like I really have to be there and focus on the task at hand. I really cannot choose my own thoughts and my own activities for the day to help my, my well being. you know? <laughs> I'm in your factory putting together goop, gobbledy gloop. We can really start to change our lives and feel really good. Mm-hmm. And even with small changes, if you're orienting around your body and sort of being friends with your body and mm-hmm. yourself. Like that's what I started to notice. Like this, this, it had this compounding effect. Like I really am starting to feel not only better in the moment, but I'm getting this lesson from somewhere that we all have Source. this power within us to feel better and to have mm-hmm. that kind of agency. So it became kind of like addictive. Mm-hmm. So I started eating macrobiotic and I just kind of followed the tenets of it. And and actually it's so funny because ultimately it wasn't the right thing for me. I felt it was so much brown rice. I always had a hard time with, with brown rice. It was hard for me to digest and made me feel really tired. Mm-hmm. And it actually made me gain a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. So I, I gained weight on the macrobiotic diet. But what I- How, mu- how much weight? Was it a full pound or not. <laughs> I need to know how much weight. I have never seen a photo of her being anything but how she is. I'd be curious to think how much a lot of weight is for her. Given up was dairy, sugar, a lot of gluten, processed foods, you know, a, a lot of alcohol. So, and coffee I gave up even for a really long time. Yeah, she's also a, a drinker, which I find so confusing. How can you be so literally anal about your diet and about your supplements and about your wellness routine and drink alcohol. There are so many studies. I don't know how so many studies. There's at least one big study where it proves that it is tied to many cancers. If you are truly invested in your wellness at the level that you claim to be, no one of these, none one of these people would drink alcohol. I'm sorry. They wouldn't. You know me, like if if someone tells me to do something, I like do it balls to the wall. (laughs) Yes, you do. You were queen macrobiotic. No doubt. (laughs) So, but that was really my first kind of big extended experiment with eating food and tuning in, seeing how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I remember, you know, staying kind of pretty on the healthy path for a while. And then I remember when I got pregnant with my daughter, Apple, I mean, I could not have eaten rice to save my own life. Mm -hmm. Like all I wanted was grilled cheese sandwiches and (laughs) yogurt. Like I went completely the other way. Yeah. So, I mean, your health routine, your wellness has evolved the more you learn and experiment and even what served you then isn't going to serve you now necessarily either. And yeah. so people I'm sure want to know, like what's your wellness routine look like now? Mm. A day in the life. Mm. Here we go. Well, as you may or may not know, I am a full disciple of Dr. Will Cole. <laughs> so uh, that means 
I follow, what do you call it? It's I'm paleo. Paleo. Yeah. yeah paleo ish, but you're pretty paleo. I'm pretty I, paleo. I, I, I try to put more ish in your life and just say, yeah, you can do it. But yeah, you, we should talk about it someday, but the paleo diet, like the guy who created it is a little bit wacky as well, uh, in a bad way. <laughs> I only know that because on maintenance phase, the podcast, they talked about it and he's got some, he like kind of went off the deep end with COVID stuff. So maybe we can visit that at some point. But you know what works for your body. I think you know what foods love you back. I do. I do. So my, in keeping with my Will Cole prescribed regimen, you know, I eat dinner early in the evening. I try to eat at six or six 30. So I'm really done eating by seven. And then I do a nice intermittent fast until I usually eat something about 12. In the morning, I'll have some things that won't spike my blood sugar, right? So I I have coffee. Okay, so she's saying the night before I eat dinner at 6 p.m., then I don't eat again till 12. But when I wake up in the morning, I have coffee. Okay, got it. Great routine so far. (laughs) I'll have a celery juice with lemon, lemon water, but I just really use the morning. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's important. Okay. Not to again, cut it off, but according to Anthony William, the medical medium, if you put lemon juice in your celery water, it will not cure your cancer. You have to have it just plain. That's what he said. No ice cubes, nothing, just the celery juice. Okay. I remember that specifically because it was so stupid. So she's not listening clearly to her spirits in her ears. As you know, I have trouble with methylation. So I'm not, my body is not a natural detoxer. I'm not good at it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, it's absolutely a part of their biology and process. I'm not one of those people. So I get it. Your liver doesn't work. If your liver is not functioning, then I think you would be not alive. (laughs) I think that's one of those things like I'm an empath. I'm just the type that just can't detox. Like, I don't think that's true. (laughs) I think you're just like everybody else impacted by things more heavily. And then I exercise in the morning. I take my binders in the morning. I take binders for, again, like poor methylation. I'm Mm -hmm. still dealing probably with some mold, even though it's probably pretty good by now, I would think. It's it's in the past. She's dealing with mold? I don't know what she's saying. Methylation? I don't know what that is. She, She, I think she's so in a world that doesn't really exist. That's like, there's terms that don't even mean anything anymore. She's like, I think I'm in the past of mold. Okay. So she had mold in her body at one point. Don't you live in like the best, most high class houses and places in the world? How do you have mold in your system? This is bullshit. Again, I think it's in the past and I do try to do one hour of movement. So I'll either take a walk or I'll do Pilates or I'll do my Tracy Anderson. And then I get in the sauna, I dry brush and I get in the sauna. So I do my infrared sauna for 30 minutes, not every day. Some days, some days I can't, I don't have time. Or sometimes I'll do the higher dose infrared blanket if I'm not home. But for me, that's, it's really important for me to support my detox because Mm -hmm. I have the fucked up M M M T H F R. Thank you. M T H F R. (laughs) MTHFR. I don't believe it. I don't believe that whatsoever. Like that's just something that you say, like my thyroid, like some people really do have a thyroid condition, but a lot of people just say, oh, my thyroid, they just say it. Cause it's like something that they heard in a magazine one time. And they're like, oh, it just doesn't work the same way as everyone else. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Some people that's true, but I think people just say stuff sometimes. They've just decided on their own. Like, yep, that's my problem. And I'm going to do this regimen to fix it even though there's been no confirmation no testing done nothing it's just like oh i'm just yep that's the type of person i am like okay and for lunch i have something i really like having a soup for lunch in fact we have one a new soup at goop kitchen which is like this green soup that i warm up it comes cold so it kind of retains all its vibrancy Mm -hmm. but i really like soup for lunch i have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days And then for dinner, I have, um, oh, I forgot that part of my wellness practice is I, Brad and I, my husband do TM meditation for 20 minutes every morning before the coffee. And then for dinner, I try to eat, you know, according to paleo. So lots of vegetables. We live in California. So there are farmer's markets all over, which Mm -hmm. is such a blessing, like all the vegetables, things that are in season and from local farms. 
and then any kind of, you know, fish or birds. And then we try to get a- pigeons, whatever's in stock outside the house. A bit clever with carbohydrates. So like, you know, sweet potato noodles, or we make tacos with the Siete grain-free tacos, cassava. the cassava. And I find that the more that I get into the habit of not trying to, you know, it's, it's, it was hard at first when I thought, oh, I'm going to have to eliminate all the joys and all the pleasure. And it's not true. Like, oh, you have, <laughs> oh, you have, <laughs> you don't eat most of the day when you do eat, it's bone broth <laughs> and lots of vegetables and birds. Like, mm. yeah, the joy is gone from your life. You've, you've chosen sadness for a reason that I don't necessarily agree with, but you know, you do you. Why not? You can join the club. There's so many ingredients that are packed with flavor, chilies and herbs and lemon. And, you know, you can really, especially with foods like Mexican food or. And also at the same time, she does all this regimen, this very strict diet, all this stuff. And she still has problems with her MFTLC detox body thing that she's created like or maybe she has it but I feel like I've never heard of that before oh your your detox is worse than other I've never heard that before in my life so I feel like it's like something they just tell people that are rich and want to spend on supplements but yeah like you're doing all of this you've done this for years and you've done meditation for years you've done all you've done every goop infrared sauna you've done the breath work the transcendental meditation and you still have problems with your body it's like whoa what is the point you might as well give it up and just like let loose a little bit why not all right back to it with asian flavors like you would not i think if you ate dinner at our house like most people when our friends come over they have no idea that they're eating like healthy food you know or that it's paleo it's just good nutritious yummy food yes Exactly. I think anyone who's going to Gwyneth Paltrow's house knows you're not going to get a filling meal. (laughs) As we're recording this right now, you have a little IV. Okay. So now we're on the IV part. You have an IV hooked up to you as we speak. Okay. That's normal. So, which is so on brand for both of us. (laughs) We pod an IV at the same time. Pod an IV. No, this is, I'm really embarrassing myself right here. (laughs) But look, you're a busy person. You're running a company. So like, do you do IVs very often? People want to ask about IVs. Like what are your... Yeah. yeah. I love an IV. I'm an early IV adopter. And especially because, you know, from my other genetic stuff, like I tend to be lower in certain vitamins Mm -hmm. or glutathione. I, I love to have in an IV, kind of a random, more fringy one, phosphatidylcholine. That's my favorite IV when I can find them. They're quite hard to find. Yeah, it was hard to find. Um, here. And those make me feel so good. But this today, just because I was flying. Why are they hard to find? I, elaborate on that. That would be an interesting rabbit hole to go down. But no, we'll just talk about more things that they don't do in a day. <laughs> I have just a bag of good old fashioned vitamins. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I just want to say this that I wrote my little notes that I what things I wanted to cover on my Southwest ticket. <laughs> this is how high. Wait, tech what I am. were you number forty two? A eighty a forty two. Forty two is my. Do you, do you my, ever fly South, Southwest Gwyneth Paltrow? Um, I don't think I have actually flown Southwest, but Let's give it a try. I'm going time. to, but forty two is my lucky number. <laughs> oh, why? I that means 42. my dad is with us. Every time I see the number 42. Sweet. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that. Okay. I support stuff like that. <laughs> you know, having a number that you're like, oh, every time I see 42, I think of my dad and I know he's with us. I think that is a delightful way to live your life. The problem that I have with like angel numbers and people who are like obsessed with numbers and numerology and angel numbers, they make it, they take it so far. They're like, oh, did you just say seven, seven, seven? Oh my God. That means that I am better than everyone. And I'm from a galactic planet that is a full of spiritual beings. And we all love the number seven. Oh my God. It's like, that's when I'm like, okay, you've taken it too far, but something like that. I think it's probably a nice balance between, you know, believing something more than just yourself. And it's like, oh, okay. Or a thing to remind you of, of, your family member. That's just my two cents. I think I should also insert myself when I'm like, okay, that's not too far. That is a nice range that I think would be a fun thing for people to do in their own life. 
That's all I've heard so far. The rest of the stuff is crazy. <laughs> I can't do it. I, I can't do it, you guys. I really want to talk about this ozone therapy stuff, but maybe we can just watch the clip because I am suffering here. I guess maybe that's a, that's the key. Like the key is only to watch the highlights. Usually I like to dive in and say, okay, let's see what else is here. Maybe, you know, they're leaving stuff out on purpose or something that gives it context. But so far, my God, nothing. In that podcast, we're just going to have to take my word for it and BuzzFeed's word for it. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good thumbnail. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow has tried rectal ozone therapy and here's what experts think. Okay, it's called known as rectal ozone encephalation therapy. Experts say there's little or no proven medical benefit of the treatment. So she's dabbled in many alternative therapies, but even she admits that blowing ozone gas up her rectum is quote, pretty weird. <laughs> Agreed. She's also said that it's been very helpful. So-called rectal ozone encephalation therapy is unusual, but not so many concur that it is helpful, at least medically speaking. Several experts spoke up on Twitter in response to Goop founder's revelation, including Dr. Kava Hoda, a gastroenterologist in Northern California who hosts the medical podcast House of Pod, who commented, please don't get rectal ozone therapy. Meanwhile, the FDA, which has not approved the therapy, issued a warning in 2019 that concluded that ozone is a toxic gas with no known useful medical application in specific adjunctive or preventive therapy. Also, don't put coffee in your butts either. <laughs> that's another one, coffee enemas. I guess that's popular. The therapy has been touted by some as a way to fight viruses and inflammation, support the immune system, improve blood circulation, speed, healing, and more, not just in humans, but in pets also. Uh, ozone is a combination of three oxygen atoms that most of us associate with the ozone layer in the upper stratosphere, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Only ozone gas is used for these supposedly therapeutic purposes. An ozone generating device is used to create medical grade versions of the gas. Not only can it be blown up your rectum, but it can also be introduced to your ears or vagina. Mm, there you go. Thank you, doctors. The cures we need. Finally, through your ears, applied under a covering to your skin, mixed in your blood, injected or ingested. However, inhaling it is highly dangerous. Okay, is there a benefit to this or are we just doing this for fun? Once introduced into your body, ozone supposedly has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects, which makes it beneficial for chronic disease. Although the jury is still out, according to Dr. Eric Asher, a family medicine physician in Lenox Hill Hospital, small studies and case reports have looked into the effectiveness of the therapies, although the Cleveland Clinic calls the evidence low quality and limited. It has been studied in relation to chronic pain and fibromyalgia. The Egypt-based authors of one paper published in 2021 said one or two sessions of rectal ozone therapy seemed safe. <laughs> That's the study I'm listening to. It seems safe. I don't know and may have helped blood oxygen in two patients with COVID-19, although the study did not include placebos or other controls. Another study of nine COVID patients found that ozone supplemented blood transfusions, the patient's blood was drawn, treated with ozone, and returned to the body, seemed to help speed recovery from pneumonia. However, in 2020, a federal court in Texas barred a health and wellness center from promoting ozone therapy to treat COVID-19, labeling it fraudulent promotion of supposed COVID-19 treatments that do no good and that could be harmful. Along with efficacy, the safety of ozone therapy is still an open question. According to Asher, the rectal delivery may cause bloating and fatigue. How could it not? How could it not give you crazy gas? You're literally <laughs> inserting gas up your butt. I would assume that there's gas that would need to be released <laughs> later. Okay, as well as stomach and rectal discomfort, more troubling is the risk of air embolisms, a blood clot in your lungs when inhaling. Inhaling may also call pulmonary edema, edema, edema when your lungs filled with liquid, that sounds good. People who have worked with ozone when using cleaning supplies or working in wastewater, among other industries, have experienced trouble breathing, coughing, headaches, long-term exposure can lead to asthma. One problem is that to be effective, especially in killing germs, ozone therapy has to be highly concentrated, making it dangerous according to the FDA. It can be toxic to human cells, potentially causing damage to the mucus lining of the colon. There's also a good chance it could affect the gut microbiome, and that's probably not something you do willy-nilly. I want to play a video that's short about Gwyneth Paltrow, and it involves someone with a shirt. What a shirt this is. <clears throat> this is Hailey Bieber. She's in the spotlight right now for stalking Justin Bieber. <laughs> There's a Selena, Hailey, Justin Bieber triangle right now going on in the world that I also don't care about, but I care about this shirt being horrible. What is this? 
And also, we need to talk about this in the sense of, why does this person have a show? This is a, a fully produced show, and this is allegedly her bathroom, but it sounds like there's a live audience here. I need to know what's going on. Why do we do this, and why do we allow this to happen? Who is paying for this? Is she, is she paying for this? Like at the Baldwin side of the family is paying for this to, to occur, or do people actually consume this media? I don't mean to be mean, but like, what does she have to say? Like, why are you a talk show host? Is she some, like, what is the qualification to do this? Nothing? Money? Okay, I got it. I already know my own answer. All right, well, this involves Gwyneth Paltrow, but I think what she says in the beginning is funny and sort of shockingly, like, what? Like, funny, not funny, haha, but funny, peculiar. And uh, you'll know the point when we get there. Hey everyone, it's Haley, and we are back today with another episode of Who's in My Bathroom? Literally, like, why does this show exist with Haley Road Bieber? Who's in my bathroom? <laughs> this is so stupid. In the new, beautifully refurnished bathroom, thanks to Pottery Barn. I am so excited about today's situation in the bathroom. I actually can't even believe I'm about to say who this next guest is. Please help me welcome Gwyneth Paltrow. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the bathroom. I can't get over the shirt. Shots fired. I'm sorry. Bathroom. Wow, this is quite the bathroom. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm so excited. So this is her cooking show that I heard about with Selena in her bathroom? <sighs> so dumb. To have you. I think I know your dad and your uncles. <laughs> That's my favorite thing that people say to me. Any stories? I did a movie with your dad, actually. Oh, it was, not me not knowing that. Well, it was a tiny independent movie. I think. She's on TikTok a lot. Not me not knowing that. <laughs> it's giving not knowing my dad's career. I think I was like 20 years old, so it was a really long time ago. But he was great. He was Aww. so nice. I love hearing that. Yeah, it was Imagine awesome. if you had some horror story and you were like, that he was be, terrible, it was a yeah, nightmare working with him. That would be him. that. Or if I had like your dad in the bathroom. I've had that happen to me, actually. <laughs> I don't know if he even knows that I know that, but I have had that happen. I didn't, I didn't. Oh, well, that's good to know, okay. <laughs> you are here. Okay, that's as much as I watched, and I was like, <laughs> that was uncomfortable for me. Like, if someone were to say that to me, like, oh, I met your dad, I know your dad from, you know, college or whatever, like, oh, that's cool. Can you imagine if I your dad, like, what? <laughs> Oh my God, she's like, ah, that happens to me all the time. So funny. <laughs> it's like, what is this show? Why are we in your fake bathroom on a set with a, a crew and people are clapping? <laughs> yeah, so she's going to make a smoothie and I don't know. I don't know if it's worth watching. I think that's the highlight of this video for me. So here's, here's a response video that I pulled where she's going to respond to the hate that people had about that podcast that... Uh, nothing that was in there that was that crazy other than boring. So that's my critique on this one. But she's going to respond to the backlash here where she's, you know, this is her courtroom look. She's going to do a quick Instagram before she heads over to court. And by the way, I eat far more than bone broth and vegetables. Gwyneth Paltrow is responding to the backlash over her wellness routine. The Goop founder takes to Instagram on March 17th to respond to a fan who asked the 50-year-old about the negative reaction to a recent podcast she did in which she described what she eats in a day. After internet users accused her of promoting restrictive eating, Gwyneth responds with a video answer. I think it's important for everybody to know that I was doing a podcast with my doctor. So this is a person that I've been working with for over two years now um, to deal with some chronic stuff. And I have long COVID. To deal with some chronic stuff. That's the thing that I'm like hung up on. It's like you own a wellness company. You do everything that money can buy to help yourself. She does Ayurveda, you know, oil pulling, dry brushing, sauna. She does everything. I've already talked about the myriad number of things. She can go on a wellness retreat. She can go on a wellness spa. She can take every supplement. She can have every organic piece of food. And yet she still has a chronic condition. It's just like, what is the point? What is the point of all this? Like she's made $250 million a year on the basis of live your best life, your healthiest life. Like 
but yet you still have this chronic illness. Like, I'm not saying that, of course, like, oh, she should heal it. But like, what is the point of doing all of these, these difficult, I, I don't know, uncomfortable, a lot of them, expensive treatments? What's the point? So I have been, and the way it manifests for me is very high levels of inflammation over time. So I've been working with Dr. Cole. And the Iron Man star wants fans to know she also has the occasional french fry. By the way, I eat far more than bone broth and veg. She has an occasional french fry? Oh my god, uh, loser. Eh. There's Colleen. There's Colleen. I cannot listen to her advice anymore. The fact that she ate, eats an occasional french fry, do you not have discipline? Ugh, gross. Vegetables, I eat full meals. Um, and I also have a lot of days of, you know, eating whatever I want and eating, you know, French fries and whatever, but my baseline and it really has been like to try to be healthy and to eat foods that, you know, will really calm, calm the system down. So. On March 13th, the Oscar winner appeared on the Art of Being Well podcast with Dr. Will Cole and gave a rundown of her daily food intake, which includes bone broth and vegetables. Do a nice intermittent fast. I usually eat something about 12. Mm -hmm. um, and in the morning, I'll have some things that won't spike my blood sugar, right? So I, I have coffee, but I really like soup for lunch. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. And for dinner, I try to eat, you know, according to paleo. So lots of vegetables. It's really important for me to support my detox. The clip quickly went viral with TikTokers accusing the star of promoting unhealthy eating habits. Comments included, is starving wellness? And yes. what is she detoxing from? According to Goop. Oh yeah, okay. What is she detoxing from if she doesn't eat? <laughs> Probably all the Goop products <laughs> she has in her system. If she doesn't eat. But in the new clip, Gwen says her diet is specific to her health needs and adds she's not telling anyone else how to live. It was a, this was a transparent look at a conversation between me and my doctor. It's not meant to be advice for anybody else. It's really... I mean, I will give her that. She doesn't seem to be the type that's like, this is how you should live your life and selling a course about it. But I mean, it's inferred that she's a successful person in life. She owns a wellness company, seems to be very obsessed with wellness. So I think it's safe to say if you're coming on a public platform and talking about what was the podcast called? Like being well or something like how to be well. Um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, people are going to think that it's advice. Now, I don't think she said explicitly, like, this is the plan to, to, for you, but not many do that. So, and I also find it to be ironic that like, there's a filter obviously glitching in the background of this. It's like, we are such in a dystopian nightmare already. Here's her husband now, just in case we're curious, <laughs> voyeuristically. Here's, I am Brad. Here, let me move myself. Brad Falchuk is her current husband. Uh, I did not know that, so I thought it was interesting to, to bring up. Uh, he is a director and television writer on the uh, cursed show Glee. <laughs> that is a cursed show, as you may know. Uh, and not in the real way, but like there's been like three major deaths of you know, celebrities essentially of that show. And Ryan Murphy's kind of like a controversial figure. And apparently he's been on, he's a part of the show too. So a little small, small world again. And uh, he was a writer and executive producer on Nip Tuck, one of my favorite shows back in the, the old days uh, about plastic surgeons in Miami. And he's married to Gwyneth now.